untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white Legends deck featuring a few of the new cards from Kaladesh Remastered, but the main centerpiece is one we had access to before, Urza's Runa's Blast, a 5-mana legendary sorcery, meaning we can only cast the Runa's Blast if we control a legendary creature or planeswalker, and then we get to exile all non-land permanents that aren't legendary. And the deck is built with a lot of legendary creatures in mind, so this will often be a one-sided sweeper for any non-land permanent, so Urza's Ruinous Blast is the reason why we're playing this deck, and then of course our deck has to be filled with lots of legendary permanents that we won't lose to our own Ruinous Blast. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck at zero mana. We've got a full playset of Mox Amber, this is another incentive for playing this legendary deck, as we get access to a zero mana legendary artifact that adds one mana of any color among legendary creatures and planeswalkers we control. Then at 1 mana we've got a Via Pashri, a new addition from Kaladesh, a 1-2 creature that for 3 mana can tap to make a 1-1 one, one servo token, and for 5 mana can tap to make an XX creature token, where X is the number of creatures we control, and we still have Riz the Redeemed, a 1-1 one, one elf warrior that for 3 mana makes an elf warrior creature token, and for 6 mana essentially doubles all the tokens we have in play. Now the tokens will get wiped away by Ursus Runus Blast, so that's a little bit of a nombo, but the Riz and Oviar are still one of the better 1 mana options we have available. Then at 4 mana we get to play with the board, the Weatherlight, which lets us take a look at the top 5 cards of our library and reveal a historic card from among them and put it into our hand, so that includes artifacts, legendary cards, both creatures and planeswalkers, as well as legendary sorceries, so this can also help us find the Ruinous Blast to give us access to it more consistently. Then we've got two copies of Vivian's Arcbro, a legendary artifact that we can tap by paying X mana and discarding a card, and then we get to take a look at the top X cards of our library and put a creature card with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield, so Arcbow is a way for us to maybe discard additional copies of legendary creatures that we already have in play, so we still get to make use of those additional cards, and then of course can help us find some of our more specific creatures in certain matchups. And then we've got three copies of Amira, Soul of the Accord, which also plays nicely with our token theme that we have with Ovia and Riz, as a 2-2 legendary creature that whenever it becomes tapped makes a 1-1 white soldier creature token with a lifelink. And then we also have a one-off copy of Shana, which gets plus one plus one for each creature we control, and also cannot be targeted by abilities or opponent's control. And then moving up the curve, at 3 mana we've got 3 copies of a Rishkar, Pima Renegade is a 2-2 that when it enters a battlefield puts a plus one plus one counter on each of up to 2 target creatures, and each creature we control with a counter on it can tap to add green mana, so it turns our cheaper creatures into ramp creatures, and also synergizes quite nicely with Amara, because if we tap Amara for mana, if we put a plus one counter on it, it will still make a soldier token, so Amara into Rishkar is a great start. And then we also have 3 copies of Zerda, the Dawn Waker, which is a 3-3, we're not playing it as a companion, just as a regular creature, but it still discounts all the abilities we activate that aren't mana abilities by two generic mana. And for one mana we can also tap Zerda to prevent a creature from blocking, but the main reason we're playing Zerda is for the discount on activated abilities, so this is great in combination with Ovia and Riz, as we now get to activate those for just one mana to make a 1-1 one -one token, and we've got a few more activated abilities throughout the deck. For example, Shalai, Voice of Plenty, for six mana can put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control, and is also a 3-4 for flyer that says we and planeswalkers we control and other creatures we control have hexproof so it can protect us from burn spells. Then at 4 mana we also have a 1 of copy of Tishar, a 2-2 flyer, saying whenever we cast a historic spell, return target creature card with converted mana cost 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. We've got a 1 of copy of Questing Beast, a 4-4 with Vigilance, Death Touch and Haste that's difficult to block and can easily take out Planeswalkers. And then the reason why we have all these 1-offs is because we're also playing a 1 of copy of Captain Cisse, which is a 2-2 that can tap and then search our library for a legendary card, reveal it and put it into our hand, so this can even find our... Urza's Ruinous Blast, which also counts as a legendary card for Captain Cisse, but it is a 2 2 4 4 mana, which is quite vulnerable and can sometimes be a little bit too slow in certain matchups, so we're still only playing the one copy. And then we also have Yasharn, Implacable Earth, which can also be nice in certain matchups, preventing the opponent from sacrificing stuff, and also searches up a forest and a plains when it enters a battlefield, which we can maybe discard to a Vivian's Arcbow activation. And then at 5 mana, besides our full playset of Urza's Ruinous Blast, we also have a singleton copy of Tulsimir, a 3-3 that is joined by a legendary wolf token that can fight an opposing creature and gain 3 life, so great against any aggressive decks. And finally, one copy of Kenrith, the Return King, and we could be 
playing some off-color lands in the mana base to use all the activated abilities on Kenrith, but in this deck we're just going to limit ourselves to using the green and white abilities to put a plus one plus one counter on a creature or to gain five life, and of course also synergizes nicely with the Zerodan discount. And then going over the mana base, we've got four copies of Temple Garden, four some Petal Grove, four of the green-white pathway, four basic forests, four basic plains, one copy of Castle Garenbrick, which can be especially useful when activating abilities like on Shalai or on Rizzer Redeemed, and then finally two copies of Castle Ardenvale, which we can also activate to make a 1-1 token. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a relatively slow hand, but it's probably still keepable. Hopefully we'll draw one or two mana creature before we have to play Rishkar. Otherwise we have a turn to board the Weatherlight, and then Rishkar can still maybe ramp us into a turn for Kenrith. Might as well start with a tapped castle, and then next turn we can play Forests. Our opponent's on blue-green. And gonna main phase a gross peril. Alright, so they're on Sultai. Alright, there's a risk. I guess that's a fine play for now. And then next turn we get to play Rishkar and get full value. Another gross peril. And make that three gross perils, but no additional lanes. Thoughtsea is going to have a look, probably takes Kenrith. Zero points at 12, hopefully no extinction events. Right, it's going to be Fatal Push killing Riz. And the Mox Amber to draw. So I guess we'll board first, see what's up. Gets negated. Alright, it's unfortunate. Hang on to the Mox Amber for now. Alright, Poden does seem to be on empty. One card remains. And we found Ovia or Shalai. I guess I like Shalai a little better. If they kill Rishkar, we can still float one mana to play Shalai here. And get in for three. And next turn we can just activate Shalai. Alright, Heartless Act kills Shalai, so Heartless Act was a little awkward against my plus one counters. Cycles Triome. And plays a Fabled Passage. Tishar. Pretty decent draw. So if I play Tishar, I could play a Rishkar afterwards. Just to get a creature back. Um, is that even worth it? Probably not. So we'll just hit for three, play Tishar. And hope my opponent doesn't draw like an Uro, which could be played and escaped in the same turn.
Well, I feel like if they had drawn an Uro, we would have seen it already. Put on passes. So, can board firsts. Find a questing beast, that seems good enough. Trigger Tashar, get back Eris. And attack for the win. Alright, sweet. Managed to beat Soltime midrange, which uh, failed to find Thoroughin Threat after having quite a bit of interaction. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with uh, fine opening hands. Get the 1 2 3 curve into maybe a Runus Blast eventually. And Amara to synergize with the Riss. And do I want to play Ovia or Riss here? I guess we'll go with Ovia since we're only working with a single green source, so it might be more difficult to play later. Tithe Taker from our opponents. So we're going to have to activate our abilities in our own turn, so we don't have to pay the extra tax. For now, we'll just play Mara. Alright, so Ovia and Riz both work quite nicely with Zerda, so our plan's going to be to make a bunch of tokens. And maybe Runa's Blast if our opponent presents more threats. Take two. So maybe a blue-white hate bears type deck, as we see Archon of Amiria. So Urza's Runa's Blast is looking good. For now we'll just play Zerda. And next turn we have a few options. Vryn Wingmare, gonna make my Runa's Blast one more expensive. So my land does come into play tapped, so for now we can play Riz and then activate Ovia. So I can activate Zerda on Tithe Taker and then offer the trade for Emara and Wingmare. And still activate Ovia. Opponent takes the trade. Second Archon of Amiria. It is nice that we have an activated ability to use when there's an Archon in play, so we still get to maybe cast a spell and then uh, use an ability afterwards. For now, Yasharn seems fine. Get to basics, which come into play untapped. And then we can still activate one of our one drops, or I can just play a tap land. Uh, we'll activate one of our creatures, I think. Probably just go with. The artifact token. Pass a turn. Another Tithe Taker. Take four. Well, there's a lot of uh, options this turn. I can start doubling my tokens with the risk if I want, but that seems like a risky proposition. I think the best course of action is just to Runa's Blast, hope they don't have a counter spell, and then take over from there. And I guess we can still make a token and attack. And our opponent packs it in, so yeah, Runa's Blast against other creature decks, if they don't expect it, can be very backbreaking. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. We've got a nice 1-2-3 curve to start out with, and then we can maybe start using Riss. For now, Forest will do. Opponent with a Scattered Groves into Basic Swamp. Yeah, we'll uh, hit for one, play Mara. Aether Hub shows up, 
opponent passes. Maybe this is some sort of uh, weird cycling synergy deck, could be. Maybe a new perspective deck, which doesn't do much until it plays new perspectives. For now, I feel like I just play Zerda. Could play Tashar thanks to Mox Amber, but don't really have a reason to yet. And maybe next turn I can go Tashar into Mox Amber, get back a creature that died. So yeah, let's hit for three here. Play Zerda and pass a turn. Four mana. Do we see a sweeper? Nope, Aetherworks Marvel. Alright, wasn't expecting that one. So, can activate Riss for just one mana, which sounds pretty good. And then I can still play Tishar if I want to, or I can just run out Tulsimir by playing the Mox Amber first. That probably adds more power and toughness to the board, since we want to try and close out the game quickly. Right, let's see if they can come up with six energy here. Ooh, extinction events. Still have a decent number of creatures left. And the shark can potentially get stuff back from the graveyard, but of course our creatures got exiled. So I guess if they have another extinction event, it's bad for me, but playing the shark is not gonna change the fact. So We'll just pass it back. Alright, Languish. So now Tashar does get back Amara if we play another Mox Amber afterwards. Runa's Blast sadly doesn't get rid of Aetherworks Marvel. So we'll play Tashar. Play another Mox Amber. Get back Amara. And then, uh, yeah, hope that they don't have another Sweeper. Temple of Silence. And our opponent explodes. Alright, so they were playing kind of a weird version of Aetherworks Marvel with a few sweepers, maybe not as many ways to produce energy. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck. And this hand, you know, could be okay, depending on what we find with the board the Weatherlight. I'll try it. If this is a Spirit Dancer deck, finding Ursa's Runa's Blast is going to be very important. And we see a Sacred Foundry tapped. Uh, I guess we'll play Forest into Riss. And a Champion of the Flame. Alright, so this must be a Red-White Auras deck. And for now, Mox Amber is probably what I want. Colossus Hammer. Alright, I see. Do they have the one mana instance? They probably do. So they're gonna equip the hammer to the champion right away. And hit us for 15 trample. Well, there's not a whole lot we can do about that. I don't even think there's any answers we can find with board the weather lights. So yeah, this game was over quickly. Questing beast doesn't do it. Can take Mox Amber and then float my mana to make a 1-1 one -one token. But a 1-1 one -one token's not gonna be enough here. Alright, opponent had kind of the nut draw here, not much we can do. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with unacceptable hands. Uh, 
Let's see what we're up against. Zalfron Void, so some sort of colorless deck. And an Aether Spell Bomb. Play Mara. Next room we can maybe cast double board the weather light. Or we could play Shalai and apply a bit more pressure. Alright, so our opponent had nothing turn two, finds an island, passes it back. And the Rishkar will do. Don't want to put more stuff on Shalai since they have a spell bomb to maybe bounce Shalai here. Four mana for Hadron Archive into Guardian Idol. Alright, so next turn we could see Ugin the Spirit Dragon, but Urza's Runus Blast can exile both of their artifacts, so that's probably the play. So yeah, I guess we'll just attack and then Runus Blast seems fine. And then we still potentially have lethal for next turn. And my opponent explodes, alright. They might have had an Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, waiting in the wings, but uh, Runa's Blast exiling their ramp artifacts worked out nicely. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Turn one. Just gonna shock myself right away. Play Ovia. Turn two, Shana. And then turn three, I could maybe play Zerda and with the Mox Amber still activate Ovia in the same turn. Opponent's gonna try to mill us. And there's a land. I guess we don't have double white, but once I play Mox Amber, I can uh, play Mox Amber first, play Zerda, and then still activate Ovia. So we've got a nice start. Cacophony mills for eight. And we've got a pretty fast clock here. Next turn we can even use a second ability on OVI if we want to. Ashok mills for four, exiles my graveyard. Yes, yeah, so we can activate Castle Garenbrig. Not that we need all that mana, I guess, since it only costs me three mana to use Ovia, so we can still board the Weather Light as well. And find a lot of solid options. Probably go for Tulsimir. Could go for Argbo to discard Mox Amber too. Yeah, sure, I guess we'll take the Argbo. Activate Ovia. And then we'll take out Ashok just to play it safe, I suppose. I for more. As you'll notice, the token isn't a 5-5, it counts how many creatures we have in play before the token itself comes into play. It's a bit confusing when you see that interaction the first time. 
And then next turn I can play Arcbow, activate OVI again. What our opponent needs is something like a Whelming Wave, so they can bounce all my stuff. Pretty good against tokens. But we can quickly redeploy our hand thanks to double Mox Amber and Castle. Alright, it looks like our opponent has given up. So we'll activate OVI one last time. And then we can attack for the win. Alright, so we had a nice start here with a turn 2 Shana, turn 3 Zerda activate Ovia right away with Mox Amber. Put a lot of power and toughness in play right away to put the mill deck under pressure. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Double Mox Amber is a little awkward, but I think the hand's still keepable overall. Ideally, we would want to wait to play Mox Amber until after Tishar to get immediate value, but we'll see. Interplanar Beacon could be a Planeswalker control deck. Turn to Guardian Idol. Well, <laughs> triple Mox Amber. I could ritual out my Tishar here if I wanted to. Doesn't seem all that great. Probably just play Mara. And an Aether Flux Reservoir. Alright. Back up Riss. Let's board. Runa's Blast, that looks good. Although Vivian's Arcbow is also appealing here since we can discard those Mox Ambers we don't need. Problem is, I don't have a lot of mana, so I wouldn't be able to activate Arcbow for a whole lot. And Runa's Blast seems important to get rid of the opponent's artifacts. Now I could technically cast Runa's Blast next turn by just playing triple Mox Amber and floating mana. But there's no reason to show my opponents that we have that uh, Mox Amber in hand. Mindstone. Opponent gains a bit of life back. Alright, Shana's not a bad pickup. So I think now we'll just play Shana, wait one more turn to pull the trigger on Runa's Blast, unless, let's see, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I guess we could see Ugin the Spirit Dragon next turn, which could be a little bit too risky. I'll take the risk and play Shana here. And then wait one more turn on Runa's Blast. And hope they don't go land Ugin. Right, Forsake a monument. That's fine. And another reservoir. So the monument is legendary, so that doesn't get exiled by Runa's Blast, but everything else does. So now I have to decide if I want to Runa's Blast before or after attacking. The advantage of doing it before attacking is that I get to keep the 1 1 token that Amara makes. Um, but of course, we don't get to deal nearly as much damage. So I think I'm fine casting it after attacking. So they still have their monuments. Third reservoir. Back up to 13. And then we want to play Tishar. And attack. So we're presenting lethal for next turn. Mm, 
Mindstone essentially gains three and replaces itself in terms of mana investment and a Mystic Forge, all right. Back up to 12, but not a whole lot of mana left over. And Shalai to draw. So best I can do is play Shalai and attack. And that should be 13 damage. Alright, sweet. So Urza's Ruinous Blast saves the day, because with double Reservoir and all that mana, the Mystic Forge would have been a lot scarier. So yeah, overall, our Green White Legends deck, it's not going to be a very competitive deck, of course. We played against some suboptimal lists as well, as you could see. So it's not meant to be played in ranked necessarily, but it is fun and it does something unique. And Runa's Blast can do some crazy things that other cards simply can't. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.